Hey everybody, Bob here and welcome back to another Making Stuff video. Today I'm going to be starting a project that I've been wanting to do for a long time and that is I'm going to start building a tracked vehicle. Now I'm not going to build a full size one like what I rode around on at Tank Commander's headquarters and if you haven't seen that video I'll put a link to it right up here in the corner also down in the description. Uh, I suggest you check that out if you haven't seen it because we had a blast making that video and had a fun time riding around on his tracked vehicles. No, I'm going to be building one that's slightly smaller and I've seen them being referred to as personal tracked vehicles. Uh, there's one out there on YouTube called uh, Magic Carpet, I think, and uh, it's basically what I'm going to build is going to be a Segway that you ride around on. It's going to have handlebars. You stand on it and you ride around on it, but instead of wheels, it's going to have tracks. So what I've done is I've hooked up with a company called RubberTrack.com. They specialize in rubber tracks for mainly construction vehicles. And they've been in business for over 20 years and they have a very helpful and friendly staff. I actually called them on the phone, told them what it was I was trying to build, and they gave me a few suggestions on uh, which parts and components to use. And they hooked me up with those parts and components. And that's what I'm gonna be using in today's video. Also frustrating for me has been that on YouTube, there's several videos of people building these track vehicles and riding them around, but they lack the details. They don't tell where they got the parts, how they built the machine, they just show it in action. And I'm gonna change that on this build because I'm gonna put a bill of materials with links, prices, everything that I use in this build is gonna be over on the Making Stuff webpage, which is right here in this link and I'll also put a link in the description. So check that out if you wanna make one of these vehicles for yourself. So you can't build a track vehicle without tracks, so let's head over here to the workbench and I'll give you some details on the tracks that I'm using from rubbertrack.com. This is one of the rubber tracks that I'm gonna be using on this project. I got a pair of these, and like I said, I got them from rubbertrack.com, and the model number on these is 180 by 72 by 39. And here's a closer look at the inside of the track. You can see here are the sprocket holes, and these are the teeth that will keep the drive sprocket and the idler wheel in place. And then here on this flat spot on either side of the teeth is where the bogey wheels will run. And in case you're wondering what type of application these tracks are used for, they're actually used on a Bobcat MT55 skid steer. So yeah, these are pretty heavy duty, high quality tracks and I believe they will hold up very well to the project that I'm going to be building. All right, so I've got my four frame pieces cut with the bearings on the end. Now I need to come up with a way that I can insert a piece of steel tube inside of this one, and then that will allow me to adjust it. It will slide in and out like this, and that will allow me to adjust the tension on the track. Now this is inch and a half steel tube. It has eighth inch sidewalls on it, so this opening right here is an inch and a quarter. I do have some inch and a quarter tube right here, but it will not go in to the inside of this tube because of this weld seam. So I need to come up with a way to get rid of this weld seam. And I think using a file is gonna be the best way to get rid of that weld seam. I don't need any special power tools or anything because I don't really need to get too deep into here, uh, removing that weld seam. And the reach of that file is gonna be plenty. It's gonna be more than what I need and it's gonna be quick and easy. So that wasn't too bad at all. It only took me about 90 seconds to remove the weld seam on the inside of this pipe. So let's do a test fit and see how well this works. 
and that works pretty good it slid in there really nice and it makes a really good nice tight fit so i believe this is going to work i just need to do it three more times So the assembly is all finished. Everything looks great. These pieces slide in and out with no problem. They're not binding, but I have run into a problem. Let me show you how this works and then you will fully understand what the problem is. I've got some 5 8 inch all thread here and then I just took a regular nut and I ground that down square. I don't know if you can see that on camera, but I ground that down square so that it would fit inside this one inch square tube. So now I should be able to just turn this to tighten and loosen the tension on the tracks. So of course, now you can see what the problem is. This is the bolt and the nut that's going to hold the idler wheel on. And I didn't account for the thickness of this bolt. And now this all thread moves against this bolt. And here's the plan that I have come up with to fix this. I'm just going to cut this piece off right here, and then I'm going to take some new pieces of angle iron, and instead of welding them on the bottom, I'm going to weld them on the top. I will have to shorten this just a little bit, but what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to have this whole flat surface back here that the all thread can ride against, and it will not interfere with the nut for the idler wheel on this side. So I think that's gonna be the best way to fix this. And I'm just gonna do that off camera because I've already done this once and it'd be kind of boring to watch me do it again. All right, so I've run into a problem with these drive sprockets and that is the sprocket has a tapered bore. It does not have a straight bore on it. And as you can see, this is my one inch axle right here. And you can see this sprocket, it wobbles quite a bit on there. And there's a little bit of a gap around here on this side of the sprocket, but if I turn it around, you can really see that taper and you can see the gap is much bigger around there. So this is gonna to have to be fixed. And here's the plan for fixing this. I'm going to have to put this on a lathe and machine this out or a mill. Somehow I'm gonna to have to machine out the center of this sprocket. And then I'm either going to weld or press into place one of these collars that has the correct bore. Now I'm gonna to have to take this over to a local machine shop because I don't have a mill and the lathe that I have is much too small to hold one of these sprockets. So now it's time to talk about the idler wheels for this project. I did have a very hard time finding anything already made that was the correct size that I needed. So what I did is I reached out to Perry over at PLM Foundry Supplies. Now he's got his own YouTube channel as well. And I sent him the dimensions that I needed the wheels made and we collaborated and he made me these wheels. So there is a video on this. I will put a link to his channel and to this video in the description of my video. So if you want to see how these wheels were made, 
Just check out those links and you can see the complete process. And he did an awesome job on these. These are cast aluminum. But I do have one problem and that is, it's the same as the sprocket. I'm gonna to have to bore out the center here and have the bearing uh, pressed into place. And again, these are too big to fit on my lathe. So I'm gonna to have to take them to the local machine shop to have that done. All right, so here it is about a week later and I've got the parts back from the machine shop. This is the idler wheel and you can see they bored this out. They pressed the bearing in there and they did a really good job that spins around quite nicely. Very happy with this. The sprocket, just as happy with it. They did the same thing. They bored out that tapered bore and then pressed this bushing in there. And these turned out really nice and I'm very happy with it. So now I need to take these over and take them over to the track assembly and I can finally start putting it together. All right, so I've got everything tacked up and it looks like it's gonna fit quite nicely. I do have a little bit of a clearance issue right here, but this track is turned upside down. So the buggy wheels will be on this side of the track. And I think when I put the buggy wheel assembly on here, it's going to lift the track up like this, and then I'll have enough clearance. If not, then I'll have to notch this out right here to give it just a little bit more clearance. And down here on the sprocket end, everything looks like it's going to line up and fit. There is that clearance issue right here. But again, I think once I get the bogey wheels in here, it's not going to be as big of a deal as what it looks like right now. So now that I've got the track assembly all set up and it looks like it's going to work okay, I need to start working on some bogey wheel assemblies. So let's head over here to the workbench and I'll show you some of the ideas that I've come up with. Okay, so here's the plan on the buggy wheel assembly. The first component I'm going to use is a bicycle shock absorber. Uh, this is just really inexpensive. I got it on Banggood. I will put a link to it in the description of the video. And I think I paid $12 for this. The next component that I'm going to use are the shopping cart wheels. And I really like these wheels because they're the right size. They're the right width. They will fit inside the track. They will ride in there quite nicely. They have the built-in bearing, so I don't have to go buy any extra bearings, and they are cheap. I think I paid about a buck fifty for these, and um, I will put a link to these in the description as well. So I've got my two rails that I have made with the tensioners and the bearings. Now I need to put some horizontal supports in here like this. Once I get those in there, I'm going to put some brackets on top of those supports that will allow me to mount the wheel assembly on top like so. And then that should leave me with one completed track assembly.
Okay, so I've got this thing assembled and I'm gonna call it assembled and not finished because it is just tack welded right now. And I'm really glad that I didn't go ahead and do a full weld on this and everything's just tack welded because I did make a pretty big mistake. Let me flip the camera around here and I will show you what that mistake is. And as you can see here, the teeth on the drive sprocket are hitting this little horizontal support. And I made a mistake here and I measured from the wrong end when I was marking where each horizontal support should have been welded on the rails. And so it's about three quarters of an inch off, which is enough to keep the sprocket from turning. So I'm really glad that I tack welded everything into place because it's gonna be really easy to cut these off. There's eight of these. I've gotta cut all eight of them off and move them down about three quarters of an inch and then weld them back on. So I'm going to do that off camera and then I'm gonna do a full weld uh, that's gonna be done off camera. And also, this has been a really frustrating project because I had to wait for back ordered parts to arrive. Uh, I had a box get lost in shipping and luckily the uh, place I bought the parts from, they replaced those to me at no charge. And uh, it's just been really frustrating to work on. I do have enough parts for the second track and I'm just gonna do that off camera and uh, just keep this project rolling so I can go on to more exciting things to show you guys in the videos. And also I'd like to ask you guys, if you're on Instagram, please uh, jump over there and follow me. Uh, my Instagram name is The Making Stuff Channel. I'd love to see you guys over there. I do post uh, some of this stuff uh, before the videos and I do a lot of behind the scenes stuff over there on Instagram. So hopefully I'll see you over there. And also, if you like the video, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider subscribing and ringing that bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos on this project and future projects. And thanks for watching.